Okay, first question is from um, from the website. It says, uh, hi, Jess, I have a question. Uh, during the last month, I have been, um, during the last month, I have become more anxious and divided in some old programs and patterns. Uh, with eating and not supporting myself, which I thought I had left behind and worked through, my children are increasingly on edge and a lot of anger and tantrums are happening. My six your old hits me a lot and screams. His older brothers age 11 and 16 can't stand when he screams. So things quickly escalate. I have been listening to you on a daily basis since July and I feel I have learned so much. However, it feels like I have some kind of glitch in my brain where I can't remember what I have heard and learned. I can't apply all the knowledge I have. Um, and right now I feel so much in fear that I can't remember anything. Right now, I feel unable to choose. What can I do to calm myself down and focus differently? Love, Olivia. All right. I love this question. Um, I love hearing from, from you guys on the, on the website, too, in this group. So let's start at the beginning. Um, first of all, I applaud you for sticking with it, because I know that this is not easy work. And if you've been you know, listening to me every day since July, I'm, I'm becoming part of your subconscious. You know, very soon you're going to start dreaming about me. They all do. Um, and really, it's just my job is to come up, kind of bombard that subconscious with different information that can kind of break up some charge. But let's start, like I said, at the beginning of your question, because there's uh, several questions that I want to make sure that I answer all of them and give you whatever I can um, to help assist you where you are. It sounds like to me where you are and and every one of us go through this, regardless of where we are in this journey, is in order for us to awaken, we have to start becoming aware of what was already there, all right? This is the part of the awakening process that we all hate, because it's like walking past a dirty room and never noticing it's a dirty room because you're so used to seeing it, but then you decide to put your house on the market, so you have to actually go in that room and clean that room, and that's the first stage of awakening because you're actually having to walk into a space that you've been avoiding and not dealing with possibly your whole life. And because you have this new level of awareness or light around you now, the lights are on in that dirty room. So you're seeing and creating a lot more on your plate and that, because you can handle it now. Now you may think like, I can't handle it. I can't can't remember I can't you know implement what you teach us I can't get out of fear you know this this is part of the second part of awakening right and so I want to guide you from that beautiful place of dark night of the soul awakening where you're like wow I am and then you're like I am right and so you start noticing all of the trigger points and all of the fear and because you're you moved into a place of consciousness you know there's millions and millions of people on this planet who aren't even aware that they're in fear they aren't aware of what's happening in their homes they're not aware of what their kids are doing they're not aware of you know any of this work and they're dealing with the reality based in how they deal with the reality but when you awaken you awaken to the mess and the mess is a mirror now Hopefully, if you've been listening to me since July, I'm not going to hit you with the tough love that I normally hit with my class. And I know that one of my videos got uh, leaked on YouTube um, and it was a teacher training class and it was some major tough love. So um, probably getting gain followers and lose followers, which I'm excited about for that one. But I'm going to try to be gentle with you since you're in kind of a delicate place. Um, the ultimate reality for your intimate relationships is the closest mirror you will have to your subconscious, okay? Intimacy means end to me, I see. And who falls into the category of intimacy is your children, your spouse, yourself, your home, your car, or your way to get around, right? The things you love, your money, your time, your work that you do, um, and your intimate players, friends, family that are kind of outside of the home, okay? That's your intimacy. Now, in virtual reality, we're creating tiers of consciousness. 
And in this particular tier of consciousness, your intimates, which is what I like to call them, they are reflecting back to you your shadow and light aspects that you can't see from a conscious space. They're both showing you your higher levels of consciousness, like your angelic spaces, your unconditional spaces, your higher self. And they're also showing you the stuff that's underneath the surface that you can't see from your conscious level of awareness. That's what the purpose of your intimates are. They're soul contracted to you to show you the reflection of a place that's too high on the shelf or too low on the shelf for you to see with or navigate with your five senses. That's the purpose of your intimates because they will show you back both your absolute positive aspects of yourself and they will also show you the parts of yourself that you have buried, um, trapped, um, abused, denied, rejected, disassociated from, whatever parts of yourself that you're hiding or have buried will be in your intimates, okay? So your trauma, your, your childhood trauma, your ancestral trauma, your Akashic trauma will be buried in your, those things that I mentioned, all of those things. And it wouldn't be a bad idea, Julie, if you actually like took notes, like because on all those things that I actually described as an intimate, okay? So it's all of your intimacy, okay? Now, when your kids are reflecting back to you behavior, okay, I'm not talking about emotion where somebody's getting angry, but behavior is chronic emotion played out, okay? Chronic feelings demonstrated over a period of time is behavior. Behavior comes from belief systems. It comes from practice, okay? So behavior comes from practicing. So if your child is hitting you, okay, and there's a lot of angry tantrums going on, and there's a lot of disorganized energy in the family unit. I want you to sit and ask yourself, where is this a reflection of maybe some unprocessed feelings that I can't display, honor, or rise to the surface? So because I don't feel safe or allowed or um, okay with these feelings inside of me, I will project them energetically into my intimates so they can reflect them back to me and show me where I am out of alignment with my truth, okay? So, and I have four kids, so I've got four intimate teachers, right? So I completely am with you on this. And one of the things that I've realized about rage and anger in children and tantrums and um, fighting is the fight that we're having with ourselves? That is what they love you so much from the other side of the veil that they are literally demonstrating the behavior that you either were never allowed to display or that you are feeling inside at an unconscious space that you don't, like I said, don't feel safe to display or don't feel allowed to be displayed or you know, won't recognize that part of you. There are so many people who are walking around with happy faces that have very angry inner children, okay? And I was one of them. And I was always the happiest person in the room, funny, charming, could, you know, get a whole room calmed down, you know, could deal with the toxic family, um, you know, always had a solution for everyone's problem, never got angry, never, you know, um, you know, never like told anybody off, you know, this was me, but that was birthed out of survival. That behavior was not a choice. Okay. That behavior was something I became to be in my physical reality. And if you look at the energetic spectrum, anger, frustration, crying, tantrums, it's all there and you're human. So if you're not having all of those spectrums throughout the day, are you really? But what we do as impacts is we deny our own existence. And we deny our own emotions because it isn't kind to others. It doesn't make sense for us to be angry. It doesn't help, right? Uh, we're not getting loved from it. We don't feel safe when we act like that in our families. So we bury, 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 bury. Now, I'm going to tell anybody that's listening to this. 
whatever emotion, whatever personality, whatever tantrum, whatever rage, whatever grief, whatever mm, tendency you were not allowed to express will be in your children, it will be in your pets, it will be in your spouse, it will be in your house, it will be in your car, it will be in your money, it will be in your time, it will be in your body. Because emotion is energy in motion. And even though you bury it from age seven to 45, the way that I did, or 40, really, when I started to clean out energetically the body, you start to resurrect these vibrations. And if you are not conscious enough to honor the rage inside of you, you will project it onto someone who will channel it for you. So that channeled version will give you the highest spectrum of reality because one thing about our kids or our pets um and i don't put spouses into this category because very rarely on planet earth are spouses unconditionals you know spouses are kind of like meh you know they are huge triggers and huge motivators and we love them unconditionally but un, you know as far as like the way that we see a child nature or an animal very different so a lot of times when our deep, deep, deep rooted personal inner child wounds need to be projected so that they can be healed. Remember the light's just coming on in the dirty room. Then you can see yourself in your child. You can see yourself in your pet. You can see yourself in your nature, right? You can see yourself in your spouse. You can see yourself in your money. You can see yourself in time. You can see yourself. Your job is to see yourself instead of seeing your child because what's happening is you are witnessing behavior of a child that does not feel safe to you because it's uprooting your anger or your frustration or your whatever your child is doing. You can literally hear the words your children say and go back to your own childhood and remember either not being able to say those words, not being able to have those things, not being able to do those things. And they are literally, your children are going to be manifesting all of your unconscious suppressed emotion, okay? And so I have four kids and in each one of them is both my ultimate light and my ultimate darkness. Birth in a very unique personality that I would call Taylor and Bailey and Madison and Luke, okay? Yet they are not me, they are not my, the soul of me. Their soul is very different from their behavior, from their personality, from their quirks, from their worries. Their ego is, is really about a lot of my shadow, okay? And so it's, it's very hard as a parent because, you know, you have that kid that just enlightens you and you have that kid that triggers you. And then sometimes it's a little bit of both and it's all for you because Planet Earth is the game of self-realization. So we use people, places, and things to mirror back to us the unconscious levels of our own selves and access points of higher levels of consciousness that we couldn't see from our circumstances, right? Can't see heaven from the ground. So therefore, you might have a child that feels like heaven. You might have a dog that feels like heaven. You might have a you know, child that feels like hell. Well, that's what's vibrating out for you. Now, whatever you're manifesting is part of your karmic journey. So what you can do is first and foremost, what, why this is actually causing you to go so unconscious and forget and not, and feel like fight, flight, or freeze is because first of all, I'm going to show you biologically, your nervous system is completely blown out. Your adrenal glands are fried. Your body's running too much cortisol. I can see that just energetically. So there is a kind of a glitch. You are absolutely 100% when I say glitch. So go back to my webinar, look at my, my, um, webinar and cannabinoids. Okay. Um, I've got lots of workshops that teach breath work. And really what we need to do is get your brain out of fight or flight more often in the day so that you can be present to actually take some of the next advice. Okay. Because if you're not present, you will not take the next piece of advice that I have. So we've got to get the brain feeling that it's safe to be present. When the brain tells the body it can be safe to be present, now you're an operating person who can walk in that dirty room and actually sit in the room. Your second step in all of this is that you accept your children as mirrors to show you something about yourself instead of rejecting them 
resisting them, you know, wanting them to be different so that you can feel different, right? Feeling overwhelmed. So again, it's if you shift your perspective of, okay, this tantrum that's happening right now is more about me than it is about him or her. They're demonstrating something to me. And so my child is hitting me, okay? What is that a metaphor for if I was going to say, look in the mirror of your own inner child? Where are you depriving your inner child? Where are you not giving yourself time and space? Where are you playing the victim perpetrator in your life? This is all warrior training. I have a workshop, okay? Now you would go and say, this child is hitting me because this child is angry. And what is underneath angry? Sadness. Where is my inner child sad? Because my child is demonstrating that, my, that he can't have what I want. And I can tell you right now, I'm not getting what I want. So the reconciliation of the inner child is how you handle all of your intimate relationships, you guys. And I have decided that I'm going to put together a workshop that is all about these intimates and being able to find all of your reflections in these intimates so that we stop creating these heroin effects of these twin flame relationships and these toxic relationships with our kids and move into a place of full responsibility and start to look at the behavior in our children as a reflection of ourselves, okay? Because once you do that, Right then and there, you're saying, I accept that I'm creating my reality. Number two, I accept that my child is, there's nothing wrong with him or her. They're not getting what they want. And if I were allowed, if I was as loved as my child is right now, I would have acted the same way when I was a kid. See, the difference in the timeline right now, you guys, is love has been permeating so much more in the last 20 years. So our children are loved so much more abundantly than we were okay and it wasn't that our parents didn't love us they just were in fear and they were shut down and they had heart walls and you know they weren't empathic as much as we were and they weren't in compassion and and rules were different between parents and children it was like back in the olden day parents were the the boss and it wasn't about loving them it was about respecting them and a child should be seen and not heard and there was very very strong rules and indoctrination when it went to parents and children now it's like we're all inner children we're all free spirits we're all people who don't want to be adults and we're all raising kids so everything looks different now so we allow our kids to be emotional we allow them to be aggressive we allow them to make their choices we allow them to say no to us we allow them to sleep in our beds we allow them you know we allow them into a space where now that shadow and our shadow is blending together and there's no boundaries, okay? And I'm gonna tell you energetically, one of the things that happens when your nervous system completely blows out um, is that your boundaries go out the window because it's like danger, 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 danger. So if you let your check engine light go on your car for a really long time, other stuff would start to break. So when your nervous system gets kind of blown out, you start to lose your ability to stand up for yourself. You go, you go from fight, flight to freeze. You get really overwhelmed. And as soon as we get overwhelmed, then we, net, we try to create this force field around us where we want to avoid problems. We want to avoid conflict. We want to avoid being hurt because we're hurting. So whenever you are hurting and you are sending out the signal that you don't want to be hurt, the universe doesn't have a no button. It only has a yes button. So whatever you're saying no to is actually a yes. So the more you resist something vibrationally, the more of a vibrational match you are. And your intimates are showing you this is what your inner child is vibrating. This is what your ego is vibrating. This is what your higher self is vibrating. The me, myself, and I team. It's the intimate team, okay? And... One of the things that I would like for you to start doing, and so I'm going to give you three pieces of advice, get your brain to manually be able to move out of fight or flight several times a day. Start practicing this with its five belly breaths, some CBD oil, breath work, music, nature, taking a breath, recognizing colors, getting in your body, grounding, but more body grounding instead of mind grounding and doing this throughout the day. This will help you retain 
information. This will help you hold on to what you're learning, okay? Because the thing is, is you have these receptors in your body that grab memories, okay? But if you're in fight or flight all the time, the only thing that your body will remember is the past. And then the past projects into the future. So you don't actually get any, you're not downloading any new memories. So everything could be great right now. And your body's fight, 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 fight. And so you're going, oh my gosh, it could go so bad. It could go, I could fail again. He could leave me. She could leave me. He could hurt me, right? Because when you don't have those receptors activated in your brain on the other side of your nervous system, you cannot retain any new data unless it feels like the past. So that's why you guys are having a hard time retaining all of this work I'm teaching because you're not actually present. If you were present, you would remember. It's like, oh, I'm so bad at names. That's because when someone tells you your name, they're, you're not listening. We're not bad at remembering names. We're bad at being present, okay? So that's the first thing, right? Getting your body into a place where your brain feels safe in the present moment, right? You might have to remove yourself several times a day. Um, but what I see is a lot of self-neglect, a lot of self-rejection, a lot of self-judgment, and a lot of self critical behavior and a lot of um, um, putting yourself last. Now, imagine that there's an inner child inside of you. If you treated that child the way that you are treating yourself, it would be abused. It would throw tantrums. It would yell at you. It would hit you. It would fight. It would say it's not fair. It would steal your time. It would waste your money. And so because your inner child is doing a 911 call and you're not listening, then what you're doing is you're projecting it into your intimates. And I'll know, I bet you that if I sat with you in a session, it's not just your kids, it's everywhere. But you're just focused on what has your attention because you can't avoid this. The thing about the reason why we as beings put our biggest triggers and biggest gifts inside of our intimates is because we can't get away from them, right? You can divorce a husband, right? But you can't divorce a kid, right? You, you can't divorce a pet. I mean, you can, but you'll carry that, right? You can't divorce yourself, right? So if higher self wants you to work through something, it's going to put it in a place where you can't get away from it. And that's how you know, okay? So that's going to be touching on a really awesome um, workshop that I'm going to be producing in the future.